In this short video, we're going to look at the rest of our derivative formulas. The first one we want to look at is the product rule. So suppose that your function is made up of the product of f and g, and that you know how to find both f prime of x and g prime of x. How can you use that information to find the derivative of the product? That is, how can you find a prime of x? Well, it's not as simple as the sum or the difference. And so to understand where the formula comes from, let's draw a picture. Let's think of the product f times g as the area of a rectangle with base f and height g. So what we're going to do is we're going to remember that the derivative of the product, that is dA by dx, will be the limit as delta x goes to zero of delta a over delta x. So what would be delta a? Well, as x changes by a little bit, so does f. So now the base of our rectangle is going to change a little bit. Well, as x changes, g will change too. So the height of the rectangle changes as well. And now delta a would be the change in the area. It would be the area of the new rectangle subtracted off the area of the old rectangle. It would be the area of this upside down L shape right here. And we're going to look at that with three parts. The first part is going to be this rectangle, which has base delta F and height G. So its area is delta F times G. The second part is going to be this rectangle on the top, whose base is F and whose height is delta G. And then the third part is this small rectangle in the upper right hand corner, which has base delta F and height delta G. Now, before we take the limit, let's note that as delta x goes to zero, both delta f go to, goes to zero and delta g goes to zero. And that's going to be important. So now, delta a over delta x, well, delta a has those three parts, delta f times g plus f times delta g plus delta f times delta g. So we can break that up into three terms. And then we're going to let delta x go to zero. We're going to take the limit. And what's going to happen? Well, in the first term, delta f over delta x at the limit as delta x goes to zero is going to give us f prime and the limit as delta x goes to zero of delta g over delta x, that goes to g prime. And what about the third term? Well, that's why we needed to note that even though delta g over delta x will go to g prime, delta f is going to zero. So the third term just goes to zero, and I'm left with these two terms as my derivative formula. So our product rule is that the derivative of f times g is f prime times g plus f times g prime. It's good to say this in words. That says the derivative of the first
times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. Let's look at an example. Here I have a function p of x, which equals the cube root of x squared times, in parentheses, negative 3 x to the power of 9 plus 2 x to the power of 6 minus 10 x cubed plus 5 times the square root of x. Now I could multiply this out and just use the power rule, but I'm going to get fractions and then I would have to do a lot of arithmetic in order to get the exponents right. So why don't I just look at this as the product? My f would be the function on the outside, the x raised to the two-thirds power, and my g would be the function on the inside of the parentheses. And then we can apply the power rule to each part when we're using the product rule. So let's think. Okay. First, I'm just going to take the derivative of f, which is the outside. And the inside does not change. Then the outside does not change. And I take the derivative of the inside. Now, depending upon what I want to do with this derivative, I may need to do a lot of algebra after this. But this is just a demonstration of the product rule. And so we're going to leave this as it is written. We're not going to try to remove parentheses. And we're not going to try to collect like terms. Our second rule is the quotient rule. So now I have a function q of x, which is f of x divided by g of x. And we'd like to get a formula for q prime of x using the derivatives of f and g. Well, we're going to rewrite this as a product because we have a product rule. We have to remember we're focusing on finding q prime of x, but let's just use the product rule to help us get there. So I'll take the derivative of both sides. Since I want to find q prime of x, I'm just going to do some algebra to get q prime of x on the left-hand side. Well, first I have q prime of x times g of x but we'll eventually get to just q prime of x. I'll replace q of x with f of x over g of x. That is the definition. And then I'd like to write this right-hand side as a single fraction. So I'll need a common denominator, which will just be g of x. And now I've written it as a single fraction. And now the only thing that's left is to solve for q prime of x. So I'll multiply both sides by 1 over g of x. And I find that the derivative of f over g is the fraction f prime times g minus f times g prime all over g squared. And that's our quotient rule. Now, let's notice a few things. First of all, we have in the numerator a subtraction. So with the product rule, we don't have to remember things exactly because the product rule only involves multiplication and addition. And the order of addition or the order of multiplication will not matter. But here we have subtraction. So we have to remember that we have to take the derivative of f first. It's f prime times g minus f times g prime. One way to think of that is since f is on top, f gets the privilege of having its derivative taken first. The other thing that we should note is that in the denominator, 
we have no derivatives at all. We just have g squared. No primes, no derivatives in the denominator. So in words, we think of the quotient rule as the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. I'll have a subsequent video where I use both the quotient rule and the product rule uh, to do some examples. Uh, but for now, uh, I'll leave the examples for the next video. And I hope that you have learned both the product rule and the quotient rule from this video.